If you've watched my note-taking video, then you'll know that I've always been an advocate of taking notes outside of the book, not within it. In fact, in that video, I specifically say I don't recommend you write inside the book at all. But since joining Instagram this year, I've seen more and more people annotating their books and boy, am I curious. Now let me be specific here because I'm not talking about people annotating non-fiction books. I'm talking about people annotating fiction books. Yeah, I know. Annotating fiction is becoming a trend. Annotators don't just underline and highlight, they use tabs, draw beautiful illustrations and write thought-provoking notes. Which got me thinking, is there more to annotating books than I realized? Well, today we're going to find out because I am going to explore the world of book annotations specifically for fiction books. I'm going to ask some friends for help and then I'm going to give it a go. I'm so nervous. But before I start to delve into this world, I have a little poll to share with you because I asked my subscribers if they've ever annotated a book or not and uh, they were not impressed. So I have my work cut out trying to convince you guys whether annotating is worth a shot or not, and honestly, I'm not even convinced myself. Listen, I have no idea where to start. So before I defile a book, I need to understand why people should annotate their books. So let's talk to some experts. Let's jump in to Instagram and DM some bookstagrammers. Starting with someone who does the most beautiful annotations I have ever seen, including some illustrations, and that's Lena's library. Honestly, Lena's posts are so flipping gorgeous that if anybody's going to convince me to give annotating a try, it's her. I'm kind of hoping Lena can tell me why she annotates, because she's talked about her experience with and love for annotating in a few posts in the past, so I'm incredibly curious of what she has to say. So Lena seems to say that annotating for her is like a form of expression and as somebody who journals daily that sounds pretty great to me and maybe something that I might actually enjoy. So there's somebody else I want to try and DM really quickly and that's yours truly Julieta who I've been following for a while and I really love her annotations as well. They're so satisfying looking and they're more word based but still beautiful. So I mean if you look at these, come on, aren't you a little curious? So from what Juliet has said, it seems like she enjoys annotating as a way to connect more with the book and enjoy the process of reading more, which I'm all for because sometimes I feel like I'm just rushing through books to get to the next book. So it might be a really beneficial experience to see what comes up from annotating and experiencing a book in a much slower way. From what they've both said, it's obvious to me that annotating is a deeply personal thing to do and the only way to see if you're going to like it is to give it a go. But I'm still kind of nervous and I'm the type of person who to do something or anything in particular, I need to know the ins and outs of the thing or at least know a little bit of information before I get going. So luckily for us, there are loads of posts on Instagram that give you a bit more specific instructions on the how because we've got the why but we need to know actually how to do it. Okay, I found a post with some kind of instructions by Litera Hua. She says she, while annotating, highlights significant parts she wants to return to later, underlines notable but not as important passages, and circles words that may also be important. She also writes notes along the margin or uses post-it notes if she needs more room. She also seems to use tabs, but doesn't talk about that here. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to Julieta for the tabbing because I know she did a post on this. It seems from this that Julieta predicts the themes that she expects to see within the book and then makes a tab for each of those themes. Then when she comes across one of these moments, she'll place a tab near the line and underline or write, write notes. What I'm getting from this is that Julieta predicts the themes that she expects to see within the book before she even starts the book and makes a tab for each of them. 
Then when she comes across one of those moments like within the book, she'll place a tab near that line and then she'll underline or write notes so she can refer back to that later. I quite like that. Okay, this is feeling a bit more doable. So here's my plan. I've got a secondhand copy of The Secret History and this is just so that I don't feel quite so guilty on my first attempt at annotating. I really don't want to ruin a new book. I'm going to use tabs to pre-plan some themes and I'm going to leave some room if I want to add more as I go. I'll also grab some clear sticky notes so that I can draw on the book but not on the book itself and then I can also expand some notes if I want to and I don't have enough room in the margin. Then I'll just go for it. Writing, underlining, circling, all that good stuff. But first things first, let's go shopping. Okay, so I have all of my stuff. Now it's time to get to it. But first I need to research a bit on the book, which as a reminder is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I'm gonna look up some themes on Goodreads or something without getting spoilers. Never done that before. Usually I don't really even read the synopsis of a book. I'll just get to it. So we'll see how this goes. And then I will use those themes to create some tabs and take you along for the ride. Okay, I'm done with my research and putting together my tabs and that didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. Um, so the, I've got three tabs with three themes on them and then I've got space for extra tabs and extra themes if I wanna add them later. Um, the first one is Ancient Greece because I am a particular fan of Ancient Greece and Greek mythology. So if there are any themes in the book, then I wanna underline those. Then I have Social Class, which is also very interesting to me. Anything that pops up with that and especially if it's kind of subtle, I really enjoy. Then I've got reality versus illusion, which I found when I was doing research and I just thought that sounded interesting. So I thought I would include that too. Um, and then if we, if as I'm going, if I see anything else that pops up, I'll just add it. Okay, so I'm gonna go and have a reading session now and see how this goes. I'm nervous. So I've just finished my little reading session. I think I've done enough to um, talk to you guys about it and then I'll just carry on. Um, I got about this far through the book and one of the things that I noticed was that this pen that I bought, I specifically bought it to write on the transparent sticky notes because apparently everything else just rubs off. Um, but obviously it goes through the pages in the book. I should have predicted that. So I've been using this my normal ballpoint pen and that works fine. Um, also, I ended up adding an extra tab already to just be beautiful writing because um, I'm really enjoying the book so far and the writing is really good. So I thought it would be um, useful for me in the future, if, you know, I wanna get back into writing that I can kind of refer back to some of these really good passages or lines or use of words that I really enjoyed. Um, but one of the things I did find was that like you can see, I've made two tabs here. Um, and the first one was easy because it's literally like a um, quote at the start, it was like about ancient Greece. So that was easy to kind of um, mark. But then later on, I had a bit where it was kind of talking about social class. And the only thought about it being like a tabable thing after the fact. So I had to go back and then do the tab. So there might be some of that where I'm kind of getting used to the idea of annotating. And then actually I did a little bit of writing within the book itself, but that was kind of weird for me. And the writing that I did was just kind of like an opinion. So that might get easier too as I go. We'll just have to find out. So I'm gonna keep going and um, we'll see how we get on. So I'm 
about halfway through not even reading this book and I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying the book in general and I think I got really lucky because I just found this on a whim in a charity shop and it kind of looked a bit old and beat up like someone really loved it. So I just thought that it would make perfect material to do the annotating uh, video on. And it just so happens that this book actually makes for a really good annotating first try. Mostly because there's so many references to so many things in you know Latin or um, Greek mythology or ancient Greece in general little clues left throughout that you can kind of pinpoint and also a lot of beautiful writing that you can also pinpoint if you want to. So it just made for a really good first try. Now I'm not sure if this would work quite as well in say a YA fantasy if I was reading that. Um, I think the kind of books that work well for annotating for me anyway are ones that really make you think and want you to go back to and reread to see if you picked up on different things and what you picked up on the first time. So for example, like something like Gideon the Ninth might work well for annotating because there would be things within that book that you'd spot the first time round. And then the second time round, you might not spot them or you might spot other things too. And that would be really fun to see. So this book was a really great opportunity to try that particular thing out. I'm going to do one more big session of reading, see how far I can get. And then regardless of if I finish this book or not for this video, I'm going to give you my final thoughts tomorrow. This is how far I've gotten. I have to say reading and annotating The Secret History has been really fun. I can see why it's such a popular book. And after I got over my initial squeamishness of writing inside of the book, it became a lot more free flowing. I'd write my reaction to things that were happening, any guesses I might have for what was coming. I'd highlight beautiful writing, Greek mythology mentions. It was fun. I almost felt like I was experiencing the book differently than I would have if I wasn't annotating in it. It's a bit like when you're reading and you react to certain things within the book, you're able to actually write them down within the book in a way that you just couldn't do when you're taking notes. And throughout the book, there were times when I was writing my reaction within the book and I was thinking, why am I doing this? And then I would think, well, maybe it would be fun to look back and read those notes at a future date. If you ever reread books, wouldn't it be kind of fun to go back and reread a book that you read maybe a couple of years ago and spot some of the things that you reacted to within the book at those exact moments and see if your thoughts have changed or your feelings on things have changed or if you spotted things that you didn't the first time around. I think that would be kind of fun. I guess I see annotating almost as a way to record thoughts. Lena talked about this and I didn't really get it at first, but I do now. As you're reading, you think and feel certain things. Annotating allows you to immediately get these down on the page at that exact moment. Of course, you could do this while you're taking notes at the same time, but it wouldn't be as quick and you would have to note down the exact page that that thought or feeling came from and then the exact line that it came from. When you're annotating, you can do this in a much more flexible way. Having said this, if you're writing notes for like an academic purpose or something, I still feel like writing notes outside of the book would be more useful because it's a more practical way of then transforming those notes into something usable for academic purposes. But if you're just annotating a book for the fun of it or for you to look at later as a leisure thing, then annotating within the book seems like quite a nice thing to do. I mentioned earlier that The Secret History was a perfect first try at annotating in terms of a book, and I stand by that, mostly because in the book are so many references that you can highlight, things that you can look back on and see if you missed earlier in the book, little twists, turns, everything. I don't think every single fiction book, at least for me, fits that bill. Books that I know contain beautiful writing, twists, turns, references like this book would be a perfect fit for annotating. All books that you want to reread, and like I said earlier, want to look back on those notes at a future date if you plan on rereading them numerous times. 
Books you're not afraid to abuse a little because they're yours and kind of always will be yours. I don't think I'm going to be donating this to a charity shop in this state. I don't know about you. So while I don't think I'm going to be annotating every book I read from now on, I think I will reserve it for certain types of books I just know will fit the bill. A bit like this book, I just had a good feeling. But if you're curious about giving annotating a go and you don't know if you'll actually like it even after watching this video, literally the only way you're ever going to know is to give it a try. So go get yourself a secondhand book to try it out on, or just pick one off your shelf. You never know, it might completely change the way you read books from now on. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you, and I will see you next time.